Hey guys, a couple days ago I made a video talking about why I think that Donald Trump's re-election chances have basically disappeared and today I want to continue talking about that and I have something else that I want to talk about in this video. So another reason as to why I think that Donald Trump really will not be able to win his re-election in 2020 is because I think that he has just lost way too much support from way too many states to win. Honestly, I think that if you look at the 2016 results compared to the numbers that Trump is seeing in the polls right now, I honestly do not see a pathway to victory for him. Today, I just want to talk about some of these states and just looking at just how much worse he's doing now than he did in 2016. So first, I want to start off with the South. This is traditionally a very safe Republican area, with the exceptions of the states of Georgia, Florida, as well as now it seems that North Carolina is not too safe for the Republicans. But the states of Louisiana, Louisiana Mississippi, and Alabama were all safe for the president in 2016. He carried the state of Louisiana by 19%, Mississippi by 18%, and Alabama by a whole 28% over Hillary Clinton in 2016. And now, if we were to take a look at Trump's numbers in 2020 against Joe Biden, he leads by 11.5% in Louisiana, 12.6% in Mississippi, and only 18.9% in Alabama. He has basically lost around 7 to 12 points in all of these states. And the only states that are now solid for th Donald Trump out of these three solid states in 2016 is the state of Alabama. And right now, I'm just going to say that in the entire southern region here, Alabama is going to be the only solid state. Moving over to the state of Georgia, this is a state that he won by 5%. He now leads in this state by 1.4%. So that is a tilt state for Donald Trump, a state that was a lean state, is now a tilt state. Another sign of decline for Trump, a state that he won with a tilt margin in 2016, the state of Florida, he won by 1.2% over Clinton. Now Joe Biden leads in this state by 2.1%. So this is now a lean state in favor of Joe Biden from a tilt state in favor of Donald Trump. The state of South Carolina, nine electoral votes, another state that was pretty safe for Joe Biden, only 0.7 away from reaching that 15% margin. This was a state that the president carried by 14.3% four years ago. His margins have basically been cut in half. He now leads in the state of South Carolina by 7.1%, barely a life classification for President Trump, and a state that he won by over 14% in 2016. And the state of North Carolina, 3.66% in favor of Donald Trump in 2016. He now is losing against Joe Biden in the polls. He has never been ahead in the polls in North Carolina. And this is the main reason as to why I think Vice President Biden will carry this state in November. Donald Trump has never, this entire election cycle, ever led in the polls in the state of North Carolina. So I think that this is definitely one of the states that Biden will be able to flip, but by a very, very small margin. Just because North Carolina, I think, is still going to go down to the wire. I think it's going to be called very late on election night or even after election night if that is really going to occur. But North Carolina is already allowing you to vote by mail. I think they did, did do a very good job with allowing that to happen very early. So I think that the results will actually be in by election night and we will have a projection out of this state. But the state of North Carolina is currently a tilt Biden state. So looking at the South, region right here. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama were solid states. South Carolina went to Trump by over 14%. Georgia was a lean state. Florida was a tilt state. And North Carolina was a lean state. So all of these states, these seven states here, they all went to the president in 2016. He swept the South. And now, Biden's going to flip Florida and North Carolina according to the polls. And his numbers in these other five states have also greatly diminished from his 2016 numbers. The state of Alaska is another very good sign of this. He won the state of Alaska by 14.7%. Very close to being a solid margin, but not a solid margin. And now he leads by 3% here. So that is basically his lead cut into thirds or even fourths. He has lost a lot of voters from the state of Alaska. He now only leads by 3% in the state. A state that was very close to being solid for him in 2016 is now barely a lean state in favor of the president. So why I'm talking about all of this is just to take a look at just the amount of voters that Trump is losing compared to his 2016 um, voter turnout numbers. So I think that with this type of just loss in interest from voters, I think that he is not going to win the election. I think that if he's going to lose this much of a percentage of the American electorate, I don't think he can win the election. 
personally, I think that Joe Biden is going to do very well in some states. In North Carolina, Florida, he does not even need these states. If Trump carries these states, it's not going to be the end of the world for Joe Biden. These are some of these states that Biden is leading by the smallest of margins. So he doesn't even need these states. He should still focus on them just in case. But these are not states that are too important for Joe Biden, but will definitely run up his electoral vote count. The state of Kansas I want to talk about next, I want to move in, uh, move on into the center of the country, I guess. The state of Kansas, Donald Trump carried the state very solid for him, 20.6% in favor of Donald Trump in 2016, and now his lead has basically been cut in half. He leads by 9.5%. The state of Kansas, this is literally the center of the country, and this is probably one of the most rural states in the entire country. Really, the population of Kansas is not too large, very rural, very conservative. But now, Kansas does not seem to be as safe for the GOP as it was just a couple of years ago. The state of Missouri is another very good example of this. Trump won this state by 18.6%. So this was solid in 2016. Now it's a lean state. Trump is only leading in this state by a margin of 6.9%. The state of Texas as well. This is another very good sign of decline for the president. He won the state by 9% in 2016 which wasn't even good for a Republican. Mitt Romney won this state by 16%. John McCain even won it by 12%. But President Trump won it by 9%, and now he is polling in the lead here by a margin of just 1.2%. So looking at the South, basically the entire Southern region, or the Bible Belt, has basically just moved so much to the left, by an average of around 8-9% to on average in all of these states. So... Definitely a good sign for the Biden campaign that he is outperforming Hillary Clinton by such a large margin in these states. But for President Trump, he, all he needs to do is win these states. But if he is losing support in all of these very solidly red states, these are some of the most solid red states in the entire country, then just think about the amount of voters that he's losing in some other states, like Michigan, Wisconsin, or Pennsylvania, and just the Rust Belt in general, because these voters are less conservative than the voters in the South. The state of Oklahoma as well. Trump won this state by 37% in 2016. He now leads by 23%. So it is still solid, but his margin basically went down a whole 14% in the state of Oklahoma. The state of Montana, I really, I'm really not going to talk about this whole northwestern region too much, just because these are very rural states and are going to go to Donald Trump by pretty safe margins nonetheless. But the state of Montana is not. He won the state by 20.4% in 2016, and now he leads by an average of 8.5%. The state of Montana. This is one of the most conservative states in the entire country. It is literally next to Wyoming and Idaho, but now he leads by 8.5% in this state. So definitely another huge sign of decline for the president from the state of Montana. And before I move on, I want to fill in all of these safe Biden states, or basically all of the states that Clinton won in 2016. Because these states, I think that we can all agree, Donald Trump really has no chance of flipping. And I really don't think that he's going to flip any of these Clinton 2016 states, in my opinion. So I'm just going to put them all into the safe Biden column right now, because I think that these states are safe for the president. And I did mess up somewhere. He shouldn't be up at 266. But, oh, um, North Carolina and Florida, that puts him at up at 266, but these rest of these states, they do put up Joe Biden at 232 electoral votes, along with these states of North Carolina and Florida, which is why he is at 276 electoral votes right now. So moving on, the state of Kentucky, 29.4% margin for Donald Trump in 2016. He now leads by 18.6%. So still a solid state, but he lost 11% of his voters in the state of Kentucky. The state of Tennessee as well. He won the state by 26%. He now leads by 12.4%. So this state went from being very solidly red for Donald Trump in 2016 to now being a likely state for the president. I'm not going to talk about the state of Arkansas. There's only been one pullout. Trump leads by 2% here. I don't think that's right, but I don't want to talk about it just because there's only been one poll, and I think it's almost definitely not too correct. The state of Iowa, I want to take a look at the Rust Belt next. This is probably the most important region, and honestly, I think it's going to be this region that puts either Joe Biden or Donald Trump over 270. I'm actually just going to put North Carolina, Florida in the toss-up section for just a moment here. Donald Trump does, I mean, Joe Biden does have 232 electoral votes from all of the Clinton states from 2016, and again, if he wins these three states, he will cross 270 electoral votes without winning any other state. So North Carolina, I'm going to put back into the Biden column as well as the state of Florida. So starting off, taking a look at the Rust Belt, Iowa right now, six electoral votes went to Trump. 
by 9.4% in 2016, he now leads by 1.8%. So this is actually a sign of, I mean, not decline, but increase for Donald Trump in the state of Iowa. He was actually down in the polls here in mid-summer, but now his numbers do seem to come back up. It is now a more of a solid tilt margin, I guess. He leads by 1.8%. Not good for him, but uh, still 1.8%. He is leading much more consistently than he was over the summer. The state of Minnesota, Donald Trump lost this state by 1.5% to Hillary Clinton. In 2016, Trump did very well in the Rust Belt. In 2016, he won Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, and not Illinois. Illinois is a very solid Democratic state, but he was also able to win Iowa. So he did very well in the Rust Belt in 2016, but now it seems that this is not going to occur in 2020. In the state of Iowa, he leads, he leads by a tilt margin. I'm sorry, I really can't talk too well today. I apologize for that. But Minnesota, he lost by 1.5%. He is now down 8.8% in favor of Joe Biden. This is literally a likely state for Joe Biden right now, the state of Minnesota. Uh, these other margins I'm really not going to worry too much about, but just Minnesota because we're talking about this state. So the state of Wisconsin is next. Trump carried the state by 0.8%. Michigan, he carried by 0.2%. And Pennsylvania, he carried by 0.7%. If he carry these three states by less than 1%, and he's losing around 8 to 12% of his voters from 2016 in the Deep South, the safest conservative region in the entire country, one of the safest regions next to the Midwest here. I think that if he is losing so many voters from these states down in the South, I think he's going to lose even more from the Rust Belt because these states, they are less conservative. They are traditionally democratic states. These are the three states that make the blue wall, Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania. These states have not gone to a GOP candidate for over 20 years before Trump carried it in 2016. So these voters have a much larger chance of flipping for Joe Biden than the voters in the South. And many of the voters in the South are already changing their vote from 2016. So this is one of the main reasons. These are the only three states that Biden needs. And he is doing very well here. In Michigan, he leads by 7.7%. Or Michigan in Pennsylvania, um, not Pennsylvania. Um, the state of Wisconsin, he leads by six point seven percent. In the state of Pennsylvania, he leads by four point eight percent. So his numbers in Pennsylvania aren't actually as good as they were midsummer. They have definitely declined for the vice president, but still a very good sign for him that he's still doing pretty well here in the state of Pennsylvania compared to Hillary Clinton from twenty sixteen. The state of Ohio, Trump won by eight point one percent. Joe Biden is now down 1.5%, so it's going to be a tilt Republican state, but still, if we take a look at this, it is still much worse for Trump than the numbers he saw in 2016. As well as the state of Indiana, right now, Trump won this state by 19.2% four years ago. He's now leading by 14.4%, so not even a solid margin in the state in which his vice presidential candidate or vice president right now is from. And for those of you that are making the argument right now that the polls are wrong, first of all, they are better than they were in 2016. A lot of pollsters have made many changes to how they are conducting their polls from 2016 because in 2016, they were not right, but they weren't too wrong either. The only state which they were actually wrong in was Wisconsin. These other two states, Hillary Clinton was not even polling that well in, in Michigan or Pennsylvania or Florida or, um, say, North Carolina and Nevada. So... The polls did get it wrong, but that was just because it was a very close race. So Trump might have been leading by 0.2-0.3%, and Clinton won a state like Nevada in 2016, but that doesn't mean they were wrong. It was just a very close, and one candidate had to be leading, so it could have really gone both ways. And the only state in which that Hillary Clinton actually was expected to win but lost is the state of Wisconsin. She was leading by over 6%, and she lost the state by 0.8%. So... Really, the only state that was wrong was Wisconsin. Every other state was within the margin of error. So that's just why you really can't say that all these polls were that wrong. And even if the polls were wrong, I really don't think so. That I really don't think that's the case. I think that I don't really don't think the polls are projecting that Donald Trump is expected to lose or win by a smaller margin in basically all of these states. Basically, every single state that we have covered today. Donald Trump's lead is expected to decrease. I think that there is no way that all of these polls are wrong it's showing that Donald Trump is expected to win by a smaller margin. I think that's definitely not going to occur. So I think that this is definitely not a good sign for the Trump campaign. I think that his numbers of or his chances of winning have really basically disappeared at this point. 
at this point, I cannot see Trump winning because he is just losing so much support from so many states. And if we're going to fill in West Virginia, it's going to be a solid Republican state. I'm just going to fill in this map. Arkansas is also pretty solid. North and South Dakota, pretty solid. And I'm just going to fill in this map just so we can have a clearer picture right here. This is Arizona I want to cover as well. This is a state that Trump won by 3.5%. So it went from lean Trump. And now it's a lean Biden state. Biden is leading by 4.8%. His peak lead, or his peak, I guess, in the state ever. Colorado and New Mexico are expected to be likely states. Nevada, a lean state. New Hampshire, also a lean state. And the two districts here, the second district, is expected to go to Joe Biden right now. And the second district in Nebraska, also expected to go to Joe Biden. So I've just filled in this map, 335 for Biden, 203 for Trump. This is basically what we saw yesterday. But this video, I just focused mainly on the southern states here, as well as some of these states, these other pretty um, tr traditionally state Republican states. And it's taking a look at how Trump's margins have severely decreased in 2016 and how this is a very bad sign and a huge sign of decline for the Trump campaign and just support for the president in general compared to 2016, which is why I don't think he's going to win. He very narrowly won in 2016. He won the states in the Rust Belt by tiny, very slim margins, and he is not even doing too well here right now. Uh, Utah, I'm actually going to put into the likely Trump column just to make this map a little bit more accurate. In North and Nevada, I also realized I made a mistake. That is expected to be a lean state, not a tilt state. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel as well as le leaving a like on this video. Comment down your suggestions in the comments below for videos you'd like to see from me in the future, as well as comment your thoughts on this video in the comments below as well. And I will see you in the next video.